Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World. My name is Daniel Rose, this is my tech corner of YouTube. So I have done quite a few videos at this point about this very cool tool called DV Disaster, not DVD Disaster, as someone points it out, DV Disaster. It does work for uh, all forms of optical media and um, they have a very nice manual uh, on the internet and they have a codec manual that's really, really uh, advanced and talks about the actual mathematics that make our correction code work. Uh, I personally uh, cannot understand it, but uh, if you have a mathematical or a scientific background, you might be able to make make sense of it. Um, but they have this one page in their manual that I thought would be worth actually just kind of doing a video about because uh, this is their intended user, uh, user flow, if you will. They have after this um, using DVD disaster the wrong way, but I don't think that most people who are kind of tech savvy enough to even be using optical media maybe in 2024 and creating error correction code, I think they probably have a pretty good idea on what they the, the best way to use this. So this is a bit dated and I'm going to point out why as we go through this, but let me just kind of read through it anyway. So they describe the ideal use case as this. Jane creates a new CD with important data. Now, first thing is in the year 2024, when we're using optical media, uh, these days really I think the only uses for archival and we have now 128 gigabyte Blu-rays on the market and certainly lots of Blu-rays with smaller capacity. And we have archival grade storage, which is what I frequently steer people in the direction of. And in fact, I say, I think it's only really makes sense to use for archival uh, archival storage. But uh, so in this, anyway, back in, the, back in the day, Jane was making her CD with some important data on it. So to protect the CD from data loss, she creates error correction data with DVD disaster. She keeps both kinds of data for later use. Now in the symbols here, I just want to point out something. They have the CD symbol two times. And uh, in my frequent uh, commentary about archival, I've always pointed out that whether it's backup or archival, we want to have... Uh, at least two copies plus the original data, one on-site, one off-site. So Jane is smart. She has created two copies here. Um, but the thing I wanted to, to point out is that there's one ECC file. So if you are um, burning two copies, you create one ISO file, you write two disks or three disks, whatever, whatever your backup strategy is or your archive strategy is, you can actually create the... You, that ECC code should work for any of the disks because the the whole point of an ISO file is that it's an it's a image of the disk. So just to point out that if you're using whether you're using RSO3 or RSO1, you actually can protect multiple disks with one file. Um and uh, in terms of storing that, I think I'm not sure they talk about best practices here, but uh, I personally recommend an NAS or even a Google Drive if you have enough storage there. Um, because, you know, the ECC files are only a percentage of the original data pool, depending on how much redundancy you use. So, um, I mean, you could put it on a disk, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you could do that, though. Really up to you. Anyway, so Jay knows that during daily use, not all data on her CD... So th this is really old school stuff when, like, I guess CDs just went bad very easily. Uh, so like she's checking it after a year to see if there's any read errors. Um, the, again, the prevention is better than cure. So I recommend going for the M disc or for archival grade optical media, um, because it's better to, you know, in, in the, for those types of media, you should potentially get more than 100 years, i.e. a lifetime of safe cold storage. So you should, you shouldn't really need to check them as at all or certainly as frequently as once a year and you, you certainly shouldn't run into this scenario that after two only two years you've got errors um i just uh, not that it's a great data point because it's still pretty recent but i just recently cat digitally cataloged all my m disks which i started burning in about may i think it was more like april of 2022 in any event they all read perfectly so, um, and that there was about, wow, like a hundred discs in my onsite archive. So encouraging, not proof of anything. It's too young, but, uh, I haven't had any, any problems. So, okay. So Jane notices she unfortunately does have problems. So she reads the, um, so she says, okay, this disc is not good. She puts it into DVD disaster. She does a scan. She says, oh, there's errors. So then we move on to the reconstruction phase. And I would say, forget two years, 
let's say 50 years, right? You've got some good stuff and there's just a tiny bit of errors. So then Jane, then we have reconstruction. Jane uses DVD disaster to read as many sectors as possible from the defective CD into an ISO image. And uh, I will have to, when maybe in my accelerated aging tests uh, that I'm currently running, some of my CDs will develop uh, bad sectors earlier than anticipated because they're left out in the rain and the sun and I'll be able to show this process in uh, on the screen. So, uh, so she has to reconstruct. So she does a... Um, so it's reading firstly, reading as many sectors as, poss- as possible, making that into an ISO image. DVD disaster works, really likes to work in ISOs. Um, and then she uses that ECC, the error correction code she, that she saved on her server or her NAS to uh, to fix, to remediate the data in the ISO image, right? Now, this is, I like this workflow because it kind of makes clear why this software likes to work at the ISO level because you can't, assuming it's a re, it's a right once media like a Blu-ray, you can't just kind of like put the disc back in and fix stuff up. Uh, and if we're using archival grade, we're not using rewritable media. So in this case, what if assuming Jane can recover the data, the original disc, all she needs to do with that is throw it in the garbage. It's, it's no use to her. It's corrupted. So what she would do is uh, is construct an ISO with the original data plus corrected for errors and then puts it onto a new CD. Now, this actually is not for my... And someone pointed out, uh, I just want to make clear, I don't have direct experience working with LTO tape. Uh, I'd never encountered it in a job and I've gone down the optical route in my own data management. But I believe, people can correct me if I'm wrong, this isn't actually an entirely dissimilar process to some of the stuff people do with tapes whereby they take defective tape, um, they uh, they find some, er- there is some error correction parity mechanism, and then they write that onto new, t- and they just repeat this cycle as ad infinitum. Um, so I-, I would suggest it's actually not a totally foreign process, uh, but that's how it's, that's, that's, this is how all the moving parts are supposed to work anyway. Just to reiterate, just to go over this one more time, make your CD, ideally multiple copies, I would always recommend, Store your ECC code somewhere safe. Ideally, store it two places if you want to be extra extra careful. If your disk goes bad, do a spot check. I would say instead of two years and 20 years. And then um, you will be able to use the... Uh, you'll take off the ISO from the disk. You'll do the ECC. You'll go to reconstruction. And then you'll write to the new medium or perhaps at whatever point we're at in the future... We will be we'll write on to the next form of storage medium uh, that has become available, assuming the ISO file can be read, which yes is an assumption. But that's how all the moving pieces are supposed to fit together. And I have to say, I think this little program, DV Disaster, yes, it looks super old school, and yes, uh, using optical media for archive is kind of old school itself. But this is kind of genius. It's really kind of a genius approach, and um, I think it's a cool, very cool idea. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope this was interesting. If you want to get more from me, do subscribe here on YouTube. Until the next one.